Hello people of YouTubes. Um, we're going to do some work on the XR3i race car today. Um, as you can see, the workshop is empty apart from the race car. I've got it in position and that's going to stay there for the next couple of months now until it's finished basically, um, which will be roughly, oh, I'm hoping, I think there is a um, track day um, or preparation day where um, basically you can go there, all the scrutineers are there from that series, from that series and they can check over the car to make sure it all falls in within the regulations. So I'm hoping to make that, which I think is either March or April. I can't remember, but if I'm wrong, I'll stick it down at the bottom of the screen. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's in here. Um, we're going to proper tear into this, um, try and get as much off as possible. I've got a lot of welding to do. Um, I've got a battery tray in a wing and out of wing to get on. So that's going to be the the main um, goals. I've got all the panels here. Um, so that's going to be the main goal. But I've got to change the gearbox. Now, this season, or next season, 2023 season, the XR Challenge, which got changed to the XR ST Challenge, um, I decided that I'm not going to have any XRs in the 2023 season. So that scrubs off this car. So the only thing that I can enter in with this car at the minute would be the classic stock hatch, um, which requires a lot of changes in the regulations. Um, and the regulations aren't out at the minute um, for the 2023 season. Now I've been on the phone to the, the chairman, I guess, of that and um, explain my situation and um, there's obviously a couple of other cars coming over from the XRST challenge over to the classic stock hatch so they are going to make some changes to the regulations to accommodate that um, but I know for fact I can't run the limit slip diff which is in this um, I guess there's an RS turbo gearbox and to be fair I don't look that old either which I'm pretty annoyed about. Um, and the other thing I can't do is I can't run polycarbonate windows. They've all got to be glass and the fronts have to be working so they've got to go up and down either via electric or manual. Now trying to find glass for one of these is an absolute nightmare. There are some bits about but there are four hours plus journeys away um, and I haven't got time at the minute to do four hours there four hours back plus stops plus to actually speak to the guys that selling these because rude just to turn up collect parts and bug off again so I've managed to source at the minute the two rear windows I am gonna have to order some rubbers but these you can get the rubbers from Burton Power and I've managed to source the driver side manual window regulator. So that's it at the minute. Um, and because I've got to take the gearbox out to do the changer, I might as well take the engine, the gearbox out, all in one lump. That then gives me access to the inside of the, the engine bay, tidy up any wire and tidy up any dents, dings, maybe throw a coat of paint on it and give me better access to this battery tray um, and also the um, where the fans go I'll play that over with a nice little plate I don't even think I'm allowed to run that strut brace um, in the stock stock hatch um, so yeah that's that and because I'm doing a battery tray I've got to take the dashboard out as well. Um, so we're going to strip all that out. Um, I've got some new bezels. Um, I've got a couple of interior trims. The um, 
the heat event and heat control trim I've got and I've got the ones where you can get the three gauges in at the top where the vents go so I can have oil pressure, oil temperature and coolant temperature because I know these temp gauges on these on these cars aren't all that accurate um, I've got a new bezel for the speedo um, it's just a standard bezel because this one here is just broken I've got a new fire extinguisher kit so that will be up to regulations I've got new harnesses so that will be up to regulations um, but I think while we're into this stage I'm going to take everything out of here bar the cage and give it a nice little tidy up a little paint um, and then put everything back in again and while we're into that sort of situation I'm going to do all the underneath as well so I'm going to take all the wheels off and take all the suspension off all the brakes off um, all the suspension components I've got a couple of bushes to replace so all the suspension components are going to be sent away to be blasted and powder coated um, and then replace the bushes as necessary I'm not going to replace all the bushes because it's just the job is already going to cost me a lot more um, than I anticipated I was just expecting to put a fire extinguisher kit and a harness in and be done with it but you know I've already spent five or six hundred quid on just bits alone um, so yeah um, what other news do I have on this car that's it the wheels I've got another set of wheels dog legs and I've already had them sent off to be powder coated and repainted or powder coated sandblasted and powder coated sorry so I've gone for this bronze effect um, which is like a newer style to the gold basically and also we're going to take off all the all the stickers and all the livery um, and then I might re-stripe re-pinstripe the gold on it just because I quite like it and that go well with the bronze wheels but yeah all this livery is going to have to go the sun strips going to have to go the door stickers going to have to go and I'm going to take all this off here and I'm perhaps just going to give that a a quick sand down and a quick blow over with a bit of gloss black paint and it's not going to be body colour um, but I'll probably go in with a bit of gloss black and it'll be closer it'll be close enough if you know what I mean because that's only single stage paint on these um, and also I've got that wing that's already in a, like a primer I guess um, or anti-corrosion thing um, so I might blow that over with a bit of gloss black as well and then just hopefully that will match up with the rest so what I'm going to do I'm going because this is already going on longer um, and you're probably all bored and left by now um, I'm going to get all the wheels off um, and start draining all the coolant out of it gearbox oil and start disconnecting stuff off the top of here um, in preparation to removal of the engine and we'll get that out of the way with first um, and then yeah then we'll get on to do the underneath but I've only got a couple of hours here in the, in the unit today um, so we'll get as much done as we can today and um, I'll I'll keep updating you as we go along throughout the day and um, yeah let's crack on A little longer than a few minutes later. Right, as you can see, 
we've cracked on, done some bits, taken some bits off. Uh, sorry, I didn't video record it. My plan was to put it on the GoPro time lapse, but it appears I came out with my GoPro with a dead battery and all my charges at home. So I'm going to have to remember that for next time. But literally, it's taken me two hours. The two hours that I had today has been taken up already just to get to this point. Um, and I have taken things off a little differently um, to what most people would. Um, and the main complication is going to be this MFI unit um, with all these fuel lines because they're all just jumbled up, they're all twisted and I have no idea where they all went so I've taken loads of photos, I've marked up what I can so hopefully they'll get put back in the right orientation um, but as you can see I've got all the water hoses off, everything on the top here is now completely undone as far as I want to take it so it is literally taking out the drive shafts uh, taking the exhaust off and then this engine can be lifted out once we've done them too and that mount there that can all be then lifted out um, which then gives me access to obviously replace the gearbox and um, we'll replace all these bolts as well because there's all sorts of different bolts and nuts and studs in there so I'll get a stud, stud nut kit on this all that exhaust heat wrap is going to have to come off because I'm not allowed to run it, it's all part of the regulations and then we'll do a cam belt, water pump and we'll take the um, rocker cover off and just see if it's got a cam in it, I can run a cam um, but it's got to be within certain, it's got to be a certain one I believe, I'm going to have to check the regulations on that um, but I'm pretty sure somewhere I read up that I can I can run a cam. But I'm going to take the cam cover off anyway, and we'll probably get that sandblasted and repainted. And it looks like it could do with a, a new gasket in there. Um, so yeah, that's all pretty much. Apart from the exhaust and the dry shafts and the mounts, that's all ready to be lifted out the top. Now I've also. Um, taking off a lot of the the fire extinguisher and the um, the electric cut off. I'll be running a electronic engine cut off. Um, try and bring things back up to date a little bit, and we'll leave that hole there for the for the new extinguisher cable. But I've got all new pulls and cables and stuff like that. To go on up, which will be good. That's the little fuel return line. I'll get out of the way because I need to show you. Get a torch. What I'm dealing with. So you can see how rotted that is. Around there. Around there in here, this in a wing here, that bit there, I'm not really too bothered about that bit really to be honest with you, um, but I might have to just weld a plate into that, dress that down and put the button elsewhere to tidy that up, so we might do that bit, but it means taking the screen out, I'm not really too sure what to do that, but you can see up in here, underneath all, that all looks fairly bad, but I think that's all treatable. That is all just flaky paint that can be grown back and just repainted. Um, and obviously all that inner wing there is gonna get replaced anyway with a new one. Battery tray can be replaced with a new one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stress to you now that this is not a restoration. This is literally trying to make it a bit better than what it was um, and to, you know, just tidy up a little bit. This isn't a res restoration, so please don't 
hanged me for that I could have done things a little bit better because I probably could have done but I'm not going to um, so yeah I'll get as done as far as I can get just to tidy it up to strengthen it all out now I wasn't going to bother placing the battery tray I was just going to sheet steel it all up um, but I have to run a battery of any kind in the original location so we'll continue with having the battery tray in there for now as I say that's all the spot welders so if I need to t take it out in the, in the future I can so I might unpick the spot welds from the new one there's quite a few spot welds to be honest with you so I might unpick all them and take the tray out anyway and then um, nut and bolt the tray back in um, so it can be removed at any point so yeah that's going to do it now so as I say I've, my two hours is up I need to go home uh, I've got stuff to do at home um, so I'll carry on um, next time when I come down I'll probably come down there tomorrow actually and I will just carry on and, and getting this engine out and um, going from there but it's all going to be in the same episode so in three two one the next day right we're back again next day again i've only got a couple of hours uh, before i've got to leave so the goal for today is going to be get the engine out um I think it's just the shafts, the gearbox mounts, the engine mounts, exhaust and gear linkage by the looks of it. So we'll get that out and hopefully start breaking down some of the front suspension because I'm going to have to take some of it out anyway um, to remove the dry shafts. So that is today's goal. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to start breaking down some of the suspension stuff, uh, drain the gearbox oil out and um, start removing the shafts. <laughs> So I've got this side all broken down now. Um, roll bar off. All the suspension components. Now I thought these were a, um, like a pressed bearing, but it turns, like, turns out it's like the old school bearings. Where they're all in the house and you can swap them and change them around. So I might get a, another bearing just to be on the safe side. I mean, to be honest with you, everything on not taken off don't look that too old, to be honest with you. Um, the only difficulty I had was to undo the end of the roll bar on the other side, and then I figured out it's a left-hand thread. 
So I'm just, I was doing it up tight and tight and tight, yeah. Um, but I needed to, to do it up to undo it, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we'll get on and get the other side um, all apart, and then we'll start draining some gearbox oil and um, getting these shafts out. Right, I think we're about ready to, to rip it out now. Um, I haven't drained the gearbox oil, I haven't pulled the shafts out. Um, I can't see a drain bunk anywhere. Um, so I think it's one of these forward things where they only give you a fill bung and that's it. Um, but I've got the gear linkage off. I've got the down pipe and the middle part of the exhaust off. So that's all ready to go. The gearbox mounts are undone. So that's ready to be lifted out. Um, so it's just a case of bringing the crane over here now, um, setting it up, and then undoing this mount. Um, but as you can see, got a bit of the body in the way there, so I'm not too sure whether we need to bring it forward and then up, or if I've got need to undo the, the mount from the from the actual block itself. So, I mean, I'm not an expert at these old escorts. Um, I've had a few, but never really worked on them that much in the sense of taking engines out and, you know, I've done brakes and suspension stuff and all that sort of stuff, but not really taking an engine out of one. So for all you people that are screaming down your telly or you're down your phone at me thinking, oh, you should have done this way, you should have done that way, I'm just winging it. So <laughs> bear with me. And... Um, yeah, we'll get the crane over here now and get it set up and then see, we'll start tugging and see what comes out and what don't come out. Right, we've got the crane on and we're doing stuff. Um, it's a little bit tight coming up the top. Um, I think these are designed to drop out the bottom on the, on the cradle. Um, so I might do that when I go to put it back up again. But I've had to take a couple of more things off. Um, the front gearbox mount, start motor, and the alternator. As you can see, we're well right against that leg there. And we're fighting the, the servo at the minute. Um, so hopefully I can now twist that out of the way and pull it up. So. I have taken both the drive shafts out. I've taken that one out of the cup there, and the other one came out of the gearbox all in one piece, hence the reason you can hear lots of drippings. Right, so just gonna put the camera down and concentrate on getting this engine gearbox out. I don't really want to drop it on myself. Um, and then once it's out, I'll come back to you and give you a final conclusion. Right, there we go. That's all out. I've had to remove this bracket down here as well as the old layer. Just give me a little bit more clearance. The trouble is that was right on the chassis leg and the gearbox was right on the brake master cylinder. So I'm not too sure how I'm gonna put it back in yet. I might do do what I said and bring it up from underneath or lower the car down onto it. Um, but I need to get one of them shopping trolley wheel things, you know, if you go click and collect and all your baskets come on them, shopping trolley things, little plastic things, you see, probably see under there. Um, I need to get a couple of more of them really, just to make things a little bit easier to move things around because I'm sort of running out of space in here and I've got about three weeks before we could start getting, well not in three weeks, two weeks before we start getting customers of cars back in again. So I need to get as much stuff off as I possibly can and get it shipped off to the, to the powder coaters. Um, and then I've got this job here, which is one of my mates. I've got to do some welding on and then that can all go back into his car. Um, but I've got all, little peaks 
sneak peek MGF race car load new bits for that going for a different suspension setup going for TF subframes and um, all that sort of stuff so I've also got that to do over the Christmas period as well um, so I'm just waiting for the suspension bits for that now but anyway we digress that's not that project but it's this one um, so yeah that's all that's all out gives me a lot better access to to plate all that up to do all that all in this corner here as well we can do it's nice to see that the, the chassis legs are actually straight by the looks of it are they straight that one's straight I think it's meant to have that little kink in there I believe not 100% sure but it has got a um, a tweak in there where the wheel's been hitting so maybe that is tweaked hmm the list just goes on and on anyway um, so we got all that out I've got the last bits of the, the undercarriage off and the roll bar brackets and all that sort of stuff so we'll continue on doing taking the rear suspension apart getting the fuel tank out and then getting everything catalogued and sent to the powder coaters and then once that's done we can then go on to tidying up all the underneath with a wire brush um, and I've got some white stone chip or Gravitex to completely do the underneath um, and then we'll make a start on doing this mess here and getting that on and I think the the idea is that we are going to put a front panel on because I think it's had a front panel on it um, and it's just been so bent up and distorted and probably had three or four front panels on but you can see all in here and it's only got a couple of little stitch welds on it holding it all in so I think we can cut away at that and dress it up and put a nice new front panel on it and that'll make it look a hell of a lot better than what it already is um, so yeah that's the front all completely taken apart as far as I'm going to go at the minute um, I might take the brake lines and the fuel pipes out for the underneath for when I do the um, the undercoat and Gravitech stuff then I'm not going to coat all them up and that'll go back um, nicely and we'll p-clip all that into place as well properly but you can see I've, I think they've been out before and they're just you know it's not very nice I think they need slight manipulation shall we say um, before they go back in uh, yeah, and then obviously we'll do all this in here and we might give it a lick of paint just to be, just to treat it, shall we? But yeah, no, that's, um, that's good. I think I'm going to leave this video here. That's how the engine's out, all the front suspension's out. That's what I wanted to achieve today in the two hours. Um, two and a quarter hours at the minute. So um, I'm literally going to end this video here and to pack up, go home we'll clear up later on but anyway thanks for watching um, this monstrosity tape shape as they were just in the um, removals of stuff at the minute um, so yeah next episode is going to be rear suspension and fuel tank and then we'll move on to the inside as well get all that stripped out so we've got to take the dash out to do the to do the battery tray see how far bad that's gone but anyway that'll do for today i'm waffling on um we'll catch you in, in the next one hopefully that will be between christmas and new year but don't hold me to that so have a good christmas and we'll see you in the next one